Welcome back guys to NunoSolutions.com. I'm Nuno and in this video I'm going to show you how you can take a JSON file, read it into a string variable and then deserialize it into objects and particularly a list of employee objects that you can access in C Sharp. So the employees JSON file that I'm going to be working with is the one that you're seeing on my screen currently has three employee objects in a JSON array. So you'll see here each employee has a first name, last name and an email. And if you remember in the last video, I showed you how to actually take that JSON file and read it into a string variable. And then we're just console dot right lining the JSON data into the screen so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to run it and you can see it successfully loading the file and then outputting it to the screen. So now the next step is going to be to actually create an employee model. So let's right click the project and add a new folder called models. Then right click the models folder and add a new class called employee. Right. And in, now we're going to basically add in the pro employee properties that we want. So I'm going to put in here uh, a new integer property called employee ID. I know that's not in the file, but that's a common property for an employee object. And I, and I'm going to put that in there and I'll show you why in the next video. Next one we're going to do is going to be first name. So the key here, guys, is that these properties have to match the fields in the objects here. So we're going to have a property called first name, a property called last name and a property called email. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. These are going to be string strings. So I'm actually going to go ahead and make this a nullable type. And I'm going to just paste it three times in here. And then I'm going to add in here a last name and email. Go ahead and save that. Um, and you can see that the modifier for this class is an internal. That means it's, it'll be accessible anywhere within this project. It's fine. You can leave it like that. Or if you want, you can make it a public class. That works as well. So let's let's go ahead and save that. And now let's go back into the program C sharp class. And what we're gonna do is just right after where we're reading the file, the employee JSON file, and imp, you know loading it into a string variable called employee.json data, which is here. What we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to deserialize this into a list. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the JSON serializer. Um, that's it, that comes in the system.txt.json namespace. So what you can do though is you can actually let's just create number one create a variable called employees. And in here, we're going to do JSON serializer. And you notice Visual Studio doesn't know what this object is. But you notice that this little light bulb appears up here. If you click on it, it gives you a suggestion here. You, you, you know, it tells you to either, it wants to add a using statement to import the system.txt.json namespace, or you could give it the fully qualified name, which is system.txt.json serializer, but that's too long. So let's just import the namespace. And now when you double click on that, you'll notice that at the top of the code file, you have a new line with the, with the using statement importing the namespace that we need. And you also notice that the JSON serializer object now changed, it's recognized, the color has changed to the, the green, which indicates that it's a recognized class within Visual Studio or within the framework. So here we're gonna say dot, cause it's gonna be a property. And we're gonna literally deserialize this object. The deserialize method has as a generic and this basically this generic is basically telling that these serialized method what type of object you want to deserialize the JSON data to so what we want to deserialize it to is going to be a list object of employee objects and you'll notice here that it doesn't know what this is so again you could put your mouse here and just do a using or guys in the .NET 6 console apps the other option is you, if you go back into the employee class you can literally just copy the class or cut then press control a to highlight everything delete everything and then just paste the class and then save it what this does is this put with this if you don't have an uh, a namespace wrapped around the class it's just going to put it in the global um, namespace of the application dotnet 6. so now if you close this you'll see that it's now recognizing it turned you know the employee uh, turned green which makes it a recognizable class so now this is actually a method right that deserialize method json serializer that deserialize and we're going to pass in here employee json data which is our variable string that contains the employee's json data that we loaded from the file 
and that's it guys now we have we should have a list of employees here how do we know there's a list of employees well we're, we're gonna like loop through this employee list and we're gonna literally output the first name and the last name to the screen so but before we do that we got to make sure that this employees object is not null so what you want to do is do an if statement if employee is not equal null then we're gonna go process it right or else you'll get an exception and you'll notice here that visual studio is predicting exactly what i want to do so i want to do a for each statement so i can loop through each employee so i'm just gonna hit tab here and you see how it just adds it automatically for me it's exactly what i want so in this for each loop we're gonna loop through each employee and we're gonna console that right line i'm gonna press tab parenthesis and we're going to use uh, a, a string interpolation in, in C sharp and the way we're going to do that the way you do that is a typical string is usually two double quotes if you start it out with a dollar sign that that tells dot net or the, the C sharp uh, uh, C sharp that you want to be able to inject objects into the string or interpolate so what we're going to do here is we're going to put two squiggly lines and then in here we could actually do employee dot first name and the cool thing is, is this is way more readable than if you just created multiple strings and then to concatenate them you, usually you typically do a plus string plus string that's really kind of ugly and hard to follow when you have a lot of concatenations so when you do this string interpolations it looks really simple and it's very easy to read so i'm going to do first name space i'm going to add the squiggly brackets again because now i want to get a variable from i want to get the field or the property value from last name so we're going to say employee that last name and i'm going to actually delete this here this console that right line employee JSON data because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to save that and I'm going to run the application. And now what this should do is just give us first and last name of every employee in this list. So let's run the application. And you see our console app was successfully able to load the JSON file into a string. It was successfully able to deserialize the object. And then it was successfully to loop through each object in the list and then write to the console, the first name and last name of each employee. I just want to stop the application here. And what I want to show you, like kind of how this thing is going to work, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here where we're deserializing the JSON data into a list of objects. So I'm going to run this. At this point, this is null. When this JSON serializer dot deserialize method executes, and you'll notice here, it's gonna it's taking this the JSON data from this string. So here's the cool thing with uh, the debugger: if you put your mouse over the string, it shows you what's in there. But you see how it has the slash n slash slash r slash n? That's carriage return line feed. And that's how you do it within the string. But if you click this view button right here, you could actually see what it actually looks like. It's way easier to read this way. I highly recommend that you use this. All I use this all the time in real life when I'm professionally developing. This is the JSON information that's in our variable, right? So the JSON serializer deserialize is going to take this, deserialize it, and it's going to basically build multiple employee objects into this list object called employees. So I'm going to hit F10 on my keyboard to go to the next line. And now here we're checking that employees is not null. If I put my mouse over it, you'll see there's a count of three which is exactly matching what's in our employees.json file. We have three employees. And if you expand this, you'll see there's, here's the first one. It's Nuno Pereira, Nuno, .nuno, Nuno at NunoSolutions.com. And the next one, you'll see the same. And you'll see that employee ID is zero, but don't worry about that for now. We're, we'll change that later. But for this uh, particular demo, we don't need that. So now we're going to go to the next line. And in this line, it's doing a for each where that's before each is a, is a loop in C sharp. That's going to go through with each employee in the employee list. One by one, you'll be able, you're able to process some kind of logic. So in here, what we're going to do, I'm going to hit F10 to continue. And then when it gets into inside the for each loop and it highlights the console that right line, you'll see that the employee that it's pulling, if I use IntelliSense, is the very first Nuno Pereira at Nuno Solutions. And you'll see if I will go into the JSON object, that is the very first object that's in the array. So when you're looping through the, the list of employees, it's going to loop in the order in which the, the items or the objects appeared within the JSON data because it deserializes it in order. If I put a, another breakpoint here and I continue, it's going to go to the next the next item. And now if I put my mouse over it you'll, and I expand the IntelliSense, you will see that now it's showing Marco, which is the second item on the list, as you can see here. And that's it, guys, uh, for this demo. Now you know how to load a JSON or a file. It actually doesn't have to be JSON. It could be any kind of data. It could be a CSV. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.